All right, so welcome back. So this is kind of part one of the videos related to linear systems and word problems. To be honest with you, when you are going to do word problems, um, you're going to have to do a lot of them to get really used to the feel of transforming word problems into linear systems where you're basically trying to solve for either one or two unknowns. And there's really no magic and there's no way around it except doing a lot and a lot of examples to be exposed so that your, your mind slowly starts to understand what the process is. You know, sometimes I run into questions that I might have, haven't seen before and they stump me as well. You know, so there isn't really any magic to it, uh, but definitely, you know, the more that you do, the better you get. So I have in this video basically three word problems that are kind of smaller. And in the future videos, I will have other word problems and I'll try to give you as kind of you know as, as much variety as I possibly can but I know personally that even if you do all of these you know you might be then good at the, these types but if something a little bit different comes along you know you're gonna have to know how to use the skill of setting up that word problem and you're gonna have to struggle all right so here is the first word problem that we have it is Two young students have a combined age of 27. If BJ is three years younger than Joanne, then how old are the two students? All right, so it's a common problem. Now, before maybe you get into these, you know, I did a short video on transforming kind of statements into math. I'll put a link up above to that one if you find it useful definitely go through them because you're going to see some of these things in these word problems all right and i will assume you know that you know how to do substitution or elimination in order to solve these problems and those videos i have done as well all right so i'll put a link to the substitution video up above for example and you can go from there so in this problem so we know we have two students now, sometimes it's even three students um, and you have to set these things up. And for this problem, okay, it says BJ is three years younger than Joanne. So now what I like to do is, you know, if I have the students, if I have the names of the students, you know, I'll sometimes will take the variables that I'm solving for. Now, I know I'm solving for age. So, I mean, I can use X and Y as we're kind of used to, you know, because it's the X and Y, and then we know it's a line, and then it's an intersection of a line. But sometimes just so that it's easier for me, you know, I might call one okay, variable B, and then the other one variable J, just kind of the front names okay, of each. But you can use X or Y, it's completely fine. So what this problem says in the first sentence is that we know that the combined age of the students is 27 so that means if we would add them together we would get 27. now you already know that this is some line right so if you were solving this you know if you put b as x and then j as y for example then that's just a line all right that you would be able to plot now the other piece of information it says that bj okay is so, and this is why those words, okay, are kind of useful to know. So, is, of course, is equal. And then it says it's three years younger than Joanne. So, three years younger than Joanne. So, that means it's three. And then because it's younger than Joanne, all right, so it's going to be Joanne minus three. Uh, because VJ is younger, okay, than Joanne. So that's important. So that's kind of like less than Joanne, right? Three years less than Joanne, but less than, okay, in this context, which just means younger. So that's what we have. And here is basically two equations, two unknowns. Now, once you set this up, you can just use substitution directly. So notice B is already isolated for you. So just substitute it right back in. And in fact, some teachers may just do this all in one step. I typically like to separate it and then I'll put it back in for myself. So what I have is, so if I substitute this B into this, then what I will get is that I have J minus three, 
all right? So that's plus j is equal to 27. And now it's just one equation, one unknown, and I can go ahead and solve it. So now expanding, so notice j and then j, so this is going to be 2j equals 27, and then it's going to be minus, so notice the minus 3, it's going to go over on the other side, so this is going to turn out to be plus. So I have 2j is equal to 30. Now dividing by 2 on both sides, then you get that Joanne is basically 15 years old. Okay, so 15 years old. So that's J. And that means that BJ, right, who is 3 years younger, okay, that would mean that BJ would have been 12 years old. And that's just coming from straight from here. And there you go. So you have solved this equation, uh, or both of these, and this particular problem. So that's how you could set this up. And this is basically called a linear system because you have two equations and two unknowns. So it's basically like two lines that you're trying to solve for the intersection, all right, for this particular problem. So that's one. So here's another variety of the problem that I have for you. And it's not necessarily with ages, uh, but it's, it's a good one. So it says a value was equivalent to five less than three times another value. So you, so right away, notice they say a value. Now we don't know what that value is. And then we have another value here. So with this, I definitely recommend if it's not names or if it's not something given to you, just call one X and then call the other one Y. All right, so right away, you know, I can say, okay, let me call this one X and let me call this one Y. So that would be my first value and then second value. Now they continue, they say the sum of both values was 19. That's very similar to the age, right? So the sum just simply means that I have X plus Y is equal to 19. That's just coming right from the sum of both values. So that's an easy one, right? But then now translating that first sentence, um, it's not always easy. So it says, okay, a value. So notice I called X. So that's, I'll just say X was equivalent. So now notice right away, it's a little bit easier if you say that. So X was equivalent to five less than three times Y. So if I translate this, so the word equivalent that you see here, so equivalent is basically just equals. So that means I have X equals, it is equivalent to five less than. So now again, don't forget less than, okay, means subtraction, but it means subtraction afterwards. So it's five less than three times. Okay, so what you have here is, so it's five less than three times Y. So three times Y, well, that's three times Y and less than, so that's less than five. So that's how we would translate this. And again, so notice it's two equations. So it's a linear system, two equations that you have, and you can just solve for the unknown, whatever it is. Now it says find the two values. So again, I can use substitution because I have X. I can substitute this back into X and I will get three Y minus five. So that can be in brackets plus y is equal to 19. And just like before, once you do the substitution, then this problem becomes rather simple. So 3y plus y, this is just 4y. Bring this over to the other side, and you get 19 plus 5, which becomes 24. And then dividing by 4 on both sides, you will find that y is equal to 6. So that's y. Now, if you want to find x, okay, so you can substitute it for x. So x, so notice it was three times y minus five. So that's going to be, so three times uh, six is 18 and 18 minus five is basically 13. All right, so this is, these are my two values and it's x and x. So that's what you have. And now notice 13 plus six indeed. Okay, so 13 plus six is indeed 19. So that's your check that you can do and then substitute it back in. So that's another example, another question. It's a smaller one, 
but it's worth starting with these ones and then being comfortable with less than, equivalent, is, some, you know, and so on. So here's a last one, at least for this video, okay, that we have. So this finishes this, okay, and here's the last one. So this one is with percents. So it says a number is 40% more than another number. So again, if they give this number and another number, just call one X and then call one Y and then proceed from there. So instead of worrying about this, we you know a number here and then another number there, you know, again, replace, call this one X, call this one Y, and then the translation becomes so much simpler because it just says X, so we have X is, so the word is just means equal, and then 40% more than another number, all right? So it's 40% more than another number, okay? So this is interesting because how, you know, how do we do this? And again, it goes back to this more than, okay, increasing by and so on, and then working with percents. So 40%, um, you know, sometimes what people will do is, okay, so this is um, more than another number, so it's y plus, and again, don't fall in this trap where you just say plus 40%, because if it's 40% more than another number, it's 40% of something, and it is always of that other number, so of y, all right? So that's how this setup would have been. So this is x equals to y plus, so 40% of y, so of y just means multiply, and we translate this back into decimal. Okay, so this is what we have. So x is 40% more than another number. So that's not always easy, and this is what I mean. You, you have to try these and feel the awkwardness when you're reading it and be just kind of like, okay, how do I do it, you know? And you have to be able to see it in your mind slowly, okay, and practice it. So this is, x is 40%, okay, more than another number. More than means plus, and then 40% means 40% of the number. Now it says, in the second one, it says, if the difference between the bigger and smaller number is eight, then what are the two numbers, right? Now this is tricky because it says the difference between the bigger and the smaller number. So, you know, which one is bigger, which one is smaller. So from the first one, so from right here, okay, because what you have, x is equal to, so notice this right here, when you add it together, so this is 1.4y, because you have a one in front of that y, and then you have this, so you're collecting like terms. So which one is gonna be bigger, right? Is y gonna be bigger, okay, or is x gonna be bigger? Well, notice x is bigger because it's 40% more than the other number. So you know which one is actually bigger. So here it says the difference between the numbers, so x minus y is equal to eight, which means x has is the bigger number minus the y. And now again, because of that, you know, you have two equations, you can substitute this back into x, solve for y, and then find your two numbers or whatever number you want to look for. So now substituting this back in, this is just 1.4y minus y is equal to 8. So this simply equals so 1.4 minus the 1, so that's going to be 0.4y equals to 8. So now divided by 0 0.4 on both sides. All right, so that's what you have. And then y is equal to, all right? And, you know, you can check this kind of for yourself if you like. Okay, but the answer is, is 20 here. So anyways, so that's your y. And now if you want to solve for x, well, x is just 1.4 times 20. So here... If you wanted to solve for x, it is 1.4 times 20. And if you do that, you're going to get um, 28, all right? So those are your two numbers. And notice 28 minus 20 indeed is 8, which does your check right there. So these are three, they're kind of similar problems because they use more than, less than, but I tried to give you a variety so that you can see these and then be able to set them up as equations. 
all right? So this is part number one of these word problems with linear systems with two equations, two unknowns, where you can use substitution. I mean, you can use elimination if you want to. Substitution is easier, all right? So we'll see you in the next uh, video, all right? Um, and I'll put a playlist which links all of these videos together. This is going to be first on the playlist, and then I'm going to do some other ones. So I'll put a link up above. All right, so that you can kind of go to that playlist and then play whichever one and then practice the problems. Okay, we'll see you then. Bye, everybody.